Hey everyone, we are uh, talking about a new topic today, which is inheritance. Um, inheritance is a feature that is uh, very core uh, to object-oriented programming language, uh, any object-oriented programming language, and really what it allows us to do is um, uh, reuse code. And uh, uh, any time you read an object-oriented programming book, you're going to hear about code reuse, code reuse, code reuse. And that's at the core of what inheritance is is for. So let me go ahead and um, pull up a, a little picture here that's going to help us uh, in our example here. I'm going to go ahead and create an insect class. And the insect class is going to be a general class. So you can see here there's a hierarchy. Uh, where a bumblebee is an insect and a grasshopper is an insect. And, and so there's an is, a, or is, an relationship here um, it, that is created when we use inheritance. So I'm just going to jump right in and do some hands-on demonstrations. So let me go ahead and open up Eclipse here, and I'm going to create a new class right in... Um, my new chapter 9 project and the class that I'm going to create is going to be the general insect class. So again, up top of, in the hierarchy is general, down below is more specific. So you can have multiple layers of inheritance. Uh, the higher in the hierarchy is the more general, the lower is the more specific. And again, it's all about code reuse. So I'm creating an insect class and to think about the the fields of an insect, um, the fields are typically private, and uh, we could say that an insect has a number of eyes, a number of legs. And we're going to create a method uh, to move the insect. So somehow it's going to move and in the move method we're just going to say the insect goes forward for three seconds. Something pretty generic and, and again it doesn't have to um, do anything specific here just to demonstrate that there are the private fields and the public methods and if we wanted to uh, we could go ahead and off of our source here generate getters and setters the number of eyes, number of legs. So we've got our getters and setters for those fields and again, if we wanted to, off of our source, we can generate uh, constructors. Again, this isn't uh, anything new to this chapter, but we have a constructor now that accepts a number of eyes and a number of legs for any insect that we create. We can also create the, uh, the default constructor. So uh, now we have our insect class. So uh, again, the idea here is inheritance and code reuse. So let's go ahead and create a new class and go back to our picture, which is going to be the class of Bumblebee, which Bumblebee is an insect. So we're creating Bumblebee. And in our class header, which is right here, uh, we are going to say that class bumblebee extends insect capital I and this is how we create a relationship between the bumblebee class and the insect class now because we've done that uh, a bumblebee will have the methods for the uh, the public methods of insect and so get number of eyes, set number of eyes, get number of legs, set number of legs, and move. So if we were to instantiate a bumblebee, 
we would have all of those methods available to us. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that. Let me go ahead and create a uh, inheritance demo. It's going to have our main in it. And let me go ahead and create a bumblebee object called buzz equals new bumblebee. And I can say buzz.set. And you can see because bumblebee is an insect, we already have our methods available to us, our public methods. Set number of legs could be two. Buzz.set number of eyes. Also to be, let's say, four legs and two eyes. And then we can use that in a print line statement. RB has buzz.get number of eyes plus eyes and get number of legs just to demonstrate that we we didn't have to recode any of our methods in Bumblebee because Bumblebees are insects we can assume uh, that they have a number of legs and a number of eyes. Now you realize that these private fields are not accessible directly through Bumblebee uh, in which case if I if I try to say buzz dot and our field was number of eyes. There's no buzz dot number of eyes. You know, that, that's not a valid way. You know, that's not accessible. This is a field that is available in memory in our RAM, but it's not directly accessible. You still have to access the number of legs. So that was our set number of legs, which our method here. So you'll call this method, you'll pass in the, the integer, and then you'll set the field equal to the parameter, which is still made private. So um, data hiding is still uh, in full effect um, by implementing inheritance this way. You can also see that in our, in our insect, there was a move method. So um, Go ahead and we can say buzz dot move and it's a I see I got a compiler error that says hey you've got a method returning void so instead of returning void let's just go ahead and return the string and we'll just say return our string here now that fixes our compiler error so this is going to print out the insect moves forward the insect goes forward for three seconds now uh, again we have a generic method here that is good for all insects however maybe we want to override that in bumblebee uh, in which case we can put a public string move method here and, and here needs to return a string so we're going to return the b flies forward for three seconds so now we have a method with the same signature in the child class called move that exists in the parent class. So when you have two methods with the same signature, you're overriding one in the child. So this example, the move method overrides the parent version. So now instead of getting a generic, the insect goes forward for three seconds. Since we created a bumblebee, um, we can say buzz.move, and when we run this, you'll see the bee flies forward for three seconds. Uh, just to demonstrate what an insect would look like, so we'll say insect crazy critter.
and we will use our overloaded uh, constructor over here in insect we accept the number of eyes and the number of legs so this insect we don't know what it is it has 500 eyes and one leg um, it is a crazy insect right and then on a print line statement matter of fact let me copy this and paste it and we'll say our insect has crazy critter number of eyes and that many number of legs and then when we move the crazy critter you can see the parent version of the move method will be called so our bee has two eyes and four legs the bee flies our insect has 500 eyes and one leg and again we call the parent version of the move method the insect goes forward for three seconds um, next to complete our demonstration um, we need to create one more class which would be grasshopper and so we'll go back into Eclipse we'll create a new class called grasshopper Try that again. Grass hopper. And again, to implement the inheritance, we'll say extends. That's our keyword. Extends will create the inheritance in this case grasshopper is the child class you could also call grasshopper the sub class in which case insect is the parent class and uh, you could also say insect is the super class so just some terminology right we could say child or sub for the for the class that's lower in the hierarchy you could say parent or super class in for the parent that's higher in the class uh, hierarchy so grasshopper extends insect and back in our demo um, let's go ahead and just overwrite move public string move overwriting the move method from the insect class return the jumps up for three for ten seconds And in our demonstration, let's go ahead and create grasshopper called uh, jumper equals new grasshopper. And let's set the number of legs. Matter of fact, just to, to demonstrate, we can uh, use a constructor. So let's create a public grasshopper that accepts int number of eyes and int number of legs. And let's say grasshoppers also have another field. So let's create a new field on grasshopper just to demonstrate something. Let's give our, our grasshopper, let's give them a, a, a color. And so we could say there's a green grasshopper or an orange grasshopper, right? So we'll say private uh, string color. And so our grasshopper will accept a string color in the constructor. Uh, 
since the number of eyes and number of legs are inherited, we can take these fields and pass them past the number of eyes and num legs to the parent constructor. And so to, to do that, basically we're going to go ahead and create this a grasshopper with a number of eyes and number of legs by calling super. And super is going to call the parent constructor, passing it the number of eyes, number of legs. So you could see here, super will call the parent constructor, which is insect, and ultimately you'll set these fields, the number of eyes and the number of legs. So when we create a grasshopper, we just pass these variables through to the parent constructor, and we'll set this dot color equal to the color that's passed in. So you can see that a child class uh, has everything that an insect is, but some additional more specific fields, uh, which is generally the idea. You, you inherit some things, but you also have more specific uh, fields and methods uh, in the children classes, which again, up top in the hierarchy is general. The lower you go, you become more specific. So in this case, a grasshopper is a more specific version of an insect. So it has a color. Uh, so let's go back to our demonstration. Now, because we don't have a no arg constructor, we have to pass it the eyes, the legs, and the color. So we'll say The number of eyes will be 2, the number of legs will be 2, not 22, and the color is orange. Then back in Grasshopper, we can create uh, maybe a two-string method that uses the eyes, the legs, and the color. So let's go ahead and write public string to string. return now to let me explain this to call the parent version of number of eyes you know the number of eyes were was set inside of insect so we can call the parent version, but actually let's just call, we can simply call get number of eyes since that's a method that should be available to us because it's been inherited, right? So it's a public method, so it's inherited in Grasshopper, so we can call it. So we'll say Grasshopper has get number of eyes plus Get the number of legs. <clears throat> and is this color. So now when we print the two string, we'll print the number of eyes, the number of legs, and its color. When we instantiate it, we'll set the number of eyes, the number of legs, and its color. So let's demonstrate that. So two eyes, two lengths, and it's orange. And let's print out jumper. The grasshopper has two eyes, two legs, and is orange. And obviously if we were to change this, this particular grasshopper is a mutant. He has 20 eyes, 200 legs, and is orange orange, red, purple. And there you can see uh, inheritance and its basics.